<laughs> so cool. Thanks. Oh, there's a cat. We couldn't pass up the opportunity to visit one of the famous swimming pig islands of the Bahamas. These pigs live freely on their own and over time have learned to be extra cute for the visiting tourists. For some snacking fees, of course. Local lore claims that a long time ago, these pigs swam to shore after a shipwreck and have been living in Piggyville on No Name Pay ever since. <laughs> Unfortunately, they can be quite territorial with each other when it comes to your donations. And Maggie was caught in the crossfire. Not sure how I feel about the island. <laughs> so what happens? You, pen you penetrate it in, huh? and then when you pulled your leg, or when he pulled, and then it pulled out at an angle, and that's what ripped it to the surface. So it's a big old triangle. But yeah, you can see that's, that's a nice squeeze. Uh huh. Really, really, I'm fine. The pigs are really cute. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Chai. Later, Jace. <laughs> Bye. Bye. What sail are we raising, Darren? Starfire. all this work for like three nautical miles. That's okay. Kind of harness the wind. Alright, ready to hoist Panda? James needs to get some Florida feet. He's got a blister from his flippy flappies. And I'm like standing on the rope because I forgot to bring my flippy flappies and it's so hot. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, there we go. Come on. Woo! <laughs> and that's like the movie up. Let's go! I'll be a woo girl for the spin fire. Spin it? Spinnaker? Spinnaker. Spitfire? What did he call it? Spitfire Spinnaker. <laughs> okay, let's go over there. <laughs> Up to the starboard side, get them both even. That way the sail has a really round, full shape, just pulling us dead down. Okay. Let's see that. Yeah. As we said, see you later to a couple friends, we set sail in some light winds for the next adventure. Onward, southeast to Marsh Harbor. So we're anchored here at Marsh Harbor. We anchored here so we can drop off Maggie. So we are down to three crew members now from a total of six. So the boat's feeling very empty. Um, but as so, when you have a bunch of people on board, it gets pretty uh, messy, lots of stuff around. So I think we're gonna go through and start cleaning some, cleaning the boat up, making it ship shape again. And, uh, and we're gonna stay here until tomorrow because tomorrow we get to buy a new dinghy motor for that motor. So there's a Yamaha dealer here in the Bahamas in uh, Marsh Harbor where you get a good 15 horsepower motor on that bad boy. Hi, right, Broski. Good work. What are you doing? Just baby. 20? I just do whatever my you want to grow up to be like your little brother? <laughs> Ooh, baby!
this is our laundry pile we're creating. We just went through like a little bit of a squall. We're here in Anchorage, but went through a squall and we tried to collect as much water as possible. So we have like a couple buckets just full of water that came off the transom. And we're gonna do some laundry, but then we saw there's another squall coming. So we're getting more stuff out on the deck, <laughs> ready to be washed and we can wash this stuff and we can put it through a good rinse and then it should be enough daylight at the end of the day uh, to get a good dry as well. Yeah. So, yeah, and we were able to collect like probably 15 gallons of, of fresh water, which is really, really cool. All right, James, well, we're deciding on what engine to buy for our dinghy. Well, we have a, uh, how big is the dinghy? Well, it's a 10 foot, 10 foot uh, inflatable boat. Yeah, so according to our calculations, we probably recommend it was probably somewhere around like a four horsepower to maybe yeah, eight. that'd be good. 15 yeah. was pushing it, yeah. but they really cut us one hell of a deal. And so we decided to just do the 115. We really think the performance game will be amazing. Um, we don't know if the thing even, it won't really float with a full person in it now. So uh, just gotta be careful. All right, what did we just do? We just bought ourselves a Yamaha 15 horsepower two-stroke engine. Look at that. This bad boy is so nice. Look at that thing, purred. Just so quiet, look at the little water shoot out there. Fired right up, first try. And then uh, we got it right here at uh, Abaco Yamaha dealers. These guys have been just super nice. Really helpful in getting us all set up with this motor. Okay, and then note to self, you don't need to pre-buy a fuel tank, it comes with one. Yeah, I didn't know that. I bought a fuel tank just in case, but it comes with a fuel tank and the hose and everything you need. So. And we're off. The old Merc Cruiser's down in the bow. to a place called Fal K. It's a national preserve, a national park. Um, and we came from Marsh Harbor where we picked up our dinghy motor. It goes really fast and it gets off on a plane. So now we're just sitting on anchor, uh, gonna wait, wait for a sunset. What do you plan to cook tonight? I'm gonna do a curry. Curry. A curry. curry with some of the actual we have some veggies left over that we still need to cook. It is the first day where our battery didn't get to 100%. Yeah. We're like starting our night shift at 83%, which still is really good. We have a ton of juice left. I think every time we cook, we seem to use like 10 to 15% depending on how long we run it. Yeah. That's either the pressure cooker or the oven or sometimes both the the induction shot stove or the oven at the same time. Yeah. So why didn't we get full battery today? Is it because it's been really cloudy. Oh, really so cloudy. It was like on and, and off. And we cloud. cooked a bit too, right? We had a couple meals. Yeah, I drained the battery from when we were at Anchor. I cooked uh, made BLTs. Yeah, those so were so good. Got up to like 84, I think, earlier today too. Oh, okay. So I was just back to where we started. Not bad. Yeah. Oh, and you guys should take a look at this yacht. Check this out. It has a slide. I think you know you've made it when your boat has a slide. So I kind of want to make a miniature slide now for SB Panda. And this is the island of Fal Key. What we can see is maybe like half a mile off the island. Uh, are really good dive sites. And they're all marked on maps. So tomorrow in the morning time, when we have good sunlight, we will check that out.
mission successful. This is our last beach adventure. Last day, last beach adventure. Beach adventure! Sad day. Sad day. We're a slave driver on SP Panda. Go, James, go. Take us to shore. How's our depth meter over there? We're definitely dragon. <laughs> Zero. Oh, there it is. We are aground. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Can you crash my beer for me? Hey. Hey, time, ma'am. Hold on. Oh, you're so manly. Oh, no. There you go. <laughs> Ow, it was so hard. <laughs> you know what a thumb gun is? Uh oh. Here we go. Two to me, all good buddies. Ow, I fucked up. Hold on, restart the video. I need to let it sit. Alright, here we go. Let's try thumb gun in round two. How many times can James thumb a beer? And he breaks his thumb. Round Ooh, two. I can always do it too. Fail. He's like, just a ow, like a ninja would do. That's coral right. gunning. Coral gunning. Oh. oh. Sharp, ouch, volcanic. This is where we've been camped for the last three or four days in Fal Key, Ke, Fal Key in the Bahamas. And it's uh, pretty spectacular. It's a nature preserve, so pretty much all that ocean you see out there to those breaking waves is all preserved, no fishing. And that's where we did some really good diving. Oh, it has a pumpkin in it! Okay, there it is. So sad, we're leaving. Our journey home takes us out into the deep waters of the Atlantic, northwest of the Bahamas, and back to Port Canaveral. We still have a fishing line out. Uh, this one we're trying is called Bali Hu. It's like a collection of flying fish with like some other fish that's chasing it that has a, a, a hook on it. I don't know what fish like, uh, apparently, because I haven't even had any fish bite. Well, I had one fish bite earlier, but that was it. So we crossed the whole Gulf Stream and had no fish bite. So kind of a bummer. But there's still a little bit, little bit of Gulf Stream left. Hopefully we'll have another chance to catch some fish. I know, I let this one out not too far. We keep getting this like seagrass stuff caught up in the lures, so it really sucks. An amazing dinner being prepared at uh, quite an angle. See Amanda's walking uphill right now to, to get most of the onions in the pot. <laughs> no, make it. To give you a reference of level, there's our gimbling stove. Leaning into the work. Yeah, we were uh, doing just fine watching a movie. The winds were like 10 knots. We're even motoring a little bit. And then, uh, and all of a sudden, this squall hit us. And we knew it was coming, so we were kind of ready for it. But when it hit, it hit. And uh, it was kind of like battle stations. Everyone, uh, you know, I jumped at the helm. Uh, Panda and James got to uh, letting out some sail. I got the boat downwind and we got it under control. So now we're just like rocking a rocket ting along. How fast are we going, James? What are we doing? Uh, I did about 7.2 knots right now. Nice. About 16.9 apparent wind. Yeah. Killing it. So we have.
have one reef in the main, uh, one reef in the Genoa, or is that two? I think we put two reefs in the Genoa, and then nothing in the mizzen. So our sail plan is looking pretty balanced right now. There's our one reef in the main. Our Genoa is reefed into the second reef. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe and hit that thumbs up. Cheers. I'm not gonna talk <laughs> anymore. Juxtaposition of the colors is beautiful. That's what I was trying to say. some real art shit for ya. It gets shallow really quickly in the Bahamas, so we have to constantly be uh, diligent with the depth. It's only y'all. America. Cora Gunning. Oh. <laughs> Pick up a bunch of sand and let it fall through your hands. <laughs> Here time, five o'clock somewhere.